name is Anika and I'm part of the STAT 107 team and in this video today we're going to be doing a problem on hypothesis testing specifically with proportions and in the context of buses so let's go ahead and uh, jump right in so we see the problem here is that Dave takes a bus to campus every day. He soon realizes that the uh, MTD bus is often late and then he feels frustrated by this so he contacts MTD to discuss this issue. The representative claims that specifically at Dave's bus stop the bus is late 21 percent of the time. So again this is what MTD the MTD representative claims to be true that the bus is late 21 percent of the time. But Dave believes that the true percentage is higher than that. So they claim the bus is late 21 percent of the time but Dave believes that this percentage the true percentage is higher so then he starts collecting data on these um, you know selected days and times and then in a sample size of 49 the bus was late exactly 19 times so now the question is asking us that is this evidence that the MTD claim is untrue or or you know true or un whatever we find, right? So we need to do a hypothesis test and state our conclusion. And again, we need to use the significance level alpha equals 0 0.5 to, you know, make our um, final conclusion, right? So let's go ahead and get started with this. The first thing um, we realize is that this is a hypothesis test, right? So we're doing some sort of test based on the data that we uh, have given and we are trying to find if this claim is true or not based on you know basically the sample that that Dave took right so the first step of doing a hypothesis test is actually realizing you know which type of test you're doing right so here we see the bus is late 21 percent of the time right so usually when we deal with percentages we're dealing with proportions right so out of a number of total times how many times is the bus late and you may think that you know we have a sample size of 49 the bus was late exactly 19 times why wouldn't this be mean well you're saying that out of 49 times the bus was late 19 times that is will actually be converted into a proportion later on right so we're actually dealing with proportions here because the claim is that the bus is late 21 percent of the time not that you know out of a sample size of out of the whole proportion right like 21 buses are late we're not dealing with means here we're dealing with proportions right so this is going to be we know that it is a uh, z test right because whenever we do uh, proportions we have a z test and is it one sample or two sample well here we just have one sample right so it's a one sample and then now we need to figure out is it one-sided two-sided right well dave believes here that the true percentage is higher than that so that is one side we think that you know the claim is that the bus is late 21 percent of the time if the true percentage is higher than that that's a one-sided test so we have a one sample one-sided z test for uh proportions here for proportions that's p right so that is the you know name of my test well the second step of doing a hypothesis test is actually listing out our um, hypotheses right so we have our null hypothesis and we have our alternate hypothesis and remember that these hypotheses are always dealing with the true population parameters so since we're dealing with proportions here those true population parameters is going to be represented by p right uh when if this was a one sample one-sided test for means then we would be writing mu here but since this is proportions i'm writing p now the null hypothesis explains what the actual claim is right so the mtd representative claims that the bus is late 21 percent of the time that's like our status quo right that is what the claim is and we write that as our null hypothesis. So my null hypothesis is p equals 0 0.21, or you can write p equals 21%, or you can even write your null hypothesis in words, right? You can say that, you know, the bus is late 21% of the time, that those are all acceptable answers of, you know, what our hypotheses could look like. And then our alternate is what we're trying to, um, we're actually trying to 
prove with our gathered data, right? So we're trying to go against the claim and the actual fact that we believe is going to be our alternate hypothesis. Now here, Dave believes the true percentage is higher than what was claimed by MTD, right? So the true proportion, the true percentage should be greater than that 0.21%. And again, this could be written as P is greater than 21%. Now, that's going to be what our actual hypotheses look like. And that will actually be, you know, the defining structure of of our hypothesis test. So that is the second step here, actually writing down the hypotheses. And our third step would be to actually calculate our test statistic, right? So calculate our test statistic. And here, since it's a z-test for proportions, this is actually going to be a z-test statistic. And hopefully that makes sense. Why? And really, the formula for how to calculate this is, you know, very similar to a how do we calculate a z-score, but here we're dealing with the actual proportions, right? So the z-test statistic is equal to our p-hat minus the p divided by the standard error. Now here, our standard error is going to be p times 1 minus p all over n. And a few things to define here, our p-hat is actually the sample proportion, basically what was gathered in our sample here. So our, over here, our p hat is going to be out of a sample size of 49. The bus was late exactly 19 times, right? So the sample proportion of this bus being late was 19 over 49. So that's what we're going to use as our p hat. And our actual p is the proportion in our in our uh, null and alter in our null hypothesis, which is p equals zero point two one. So notice that there is a distinction here between p hat, which represents the sample proportion, and p, which represents the population parameter proportion, which we claim to be zero point two one. And then the standard error here uses p, not p hat. So we're going to be using the uh, population parameter to calculate that standard error. So let's go ahead and you know get started with calculating our z test statistic. Well, it's going to be z equals and then our p hat here is 19 over 49 minus our population parameter p, which is 0 0.21, all divided by, and then the standard error is going to be 0 0.21 times the 1 minus 0 0.21, which is going to be 0 0.79 divided by our sample size, n, which is 49. That is going to be our n. And when we calculate this in our calculator, we get uh, 3.0549. So that is going to be the z-test statistic. And again, you can leave this as a um, you know, fraction, or you can leave it as a decimal. Uh, whatever you do is basically up to you. So that is our third part of you know, basically doing the hypothesis test. Now, the fourth part is calculating our p-value, right? So calculate the p-value. And I believe the best way, you know, to calculate the p-value is to really visualize what the problem is asking and what your claim is and, you know, definitely visualizing what side you're working with here, right? This is a one-sided. We know the p-value is going to be a probability. So really drawing out the, you know, bell curve is a really good way to basically visualize what's happening, right? So we have our bell curve right here. We know that this, uh, the mean is going to be zero and mean of zero comma one, right? And our z-test statistic should be, you know, pretty far out because 3.05 is a pretty large uh, z-score, so 3.0549. And now we have here, since we're calculating the we're seeing if the true percentage, right, 
is higher than what MTD claims, which is 21%. We know this is a one-sided test, but we our tail that we're going to be dealing with is actually to the right here. Right, and hopefully that makes sense because we look at this sign here, since our true proportion we believe to be greater than 0.21, we're finding if the probability of us basically getting a you know, z-test statistic that is equal to 3.0549 or greater, right, because we want to see if that true percentage is greater than 0.21 and really this area that we find here that is going to be our p-value because again the p-value is the probability right it's a probability that we observe a sample that is um, greater than or you know at, at least greater than or as extreme as the one we observed assuming this null hypothesis is true so if we get a sample that is you know greater than as extreme as or more extreme than you know in the in the forward in the greater than direction assuming the null hypothesis is true if this p value is very small we know that this is a um, you know statistically significant answer right and again what do we mean by small we mean that alpha equals uh, 0 0.05 that is how we define small and if our answer is statistically significant right so that p-value is really that defining factor in what our you know final decision our final conclusion will look like so let's just go ahead and calculate the p-value you can do this by using a calculator or with python i prefer python so to calculate this you can use norm.cdf in python which again calculates the probability um, given a z-score but it calculates a probability to the left but since we're calculating that right-tailed uh, probability we need to do one minus so we're basically doing one minus this whole area here to to get this tail over here so hopefully that makes sense so it's one minus norm dot cdf and now i'm just putting my z-score which is 3.0549 Right, and maybe I can add a couple more decimal points just to be a bit more exact. And I'm just going to go ahead and move over to my terminal here. And since I'm using norm.cdf, I'm using the scipy.stats library. So from scipy.stats import norm. And it's going to take some time and then we're doing one minus norm.cdf and then our z-score which is 3.054899 and with that we get a probability basically of 0 0.001126 so just gonna write that here 0 0.001126 now that is the basically this probability here which is going to be our p-value right so now you may think that you know we're done with the whole hypothesis test but actually the most important part is still left right the most important part is finding what our conclusion is right deriving our conclusion based on basically all the above steps that we have done right and that's the most important part of a hypothesis test so conclusion based on that p-value and we see here that because this p-value is quite small right 0 0.00126 is indeed less than alpha we can say here that since our p-value of 0.001126 is less than our alpha level of 0.05 this means we reject the null hypothesis, right? So if our p-value, again, writing some reminders here, if p-value is less than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. And if p-value is greater than alpha, then we fail to reject that null hypothesis, right? So since our p-value is less than alpha, we reject our null hypothesis and, you know, it's always um, a good idea to expand on the context, right? Include context in the final conclusion. What does rejecting our null hypothesis really mean, right? So this means that we have we have enough 
convincing evidence, right? Because since this uh, p-value here is statistically significant, since this is less than alpha, we can count this as you know pretty convincing evidence, right? So this means we have enough convincing evidence to conclude since we reject the null hypothesis, this means that uh, the true proportion, and we can look back at the question again, the true percentage really of the you know bus being late at Dave's bus stop is higher than what MTD claims to be, which is 21%. So to conclude that basically the true percentage, true percentage, of uh, the bus being late and where it's at Dave's bus stop at Dave's bus stop is higher right that is the key um, idea that we found is basically higher than than what well it's then what MTD claims to be true and you can write that, which it was 21%. So here, our basically our final um, conclusion is that the true percentage of the bus being late at Dave's bus stop is, you know, is higher than what MTD claims to be true, is higher than 21%. So in the end, we, we don't want to say we accepted the null hypothesis. Um, we just want to say that we rejected the HO, so we have enough convincing evidence to conclude that you know the true proportion is higher than 21%. And what does this enough convincing evidence mean? Well, it's using the significance level alpha, right? If our alpha was even less, like you know 0 0.01, well, the p-value would still be less than alpha. So you can, um, so really, your conclusion really depends on how. Um, how convincing you want this conclusion to be, right? If you have a very, very small alpha, then your p-value better be very small because our significance level is also quite small. So this means that we just have stronger evidence, really, that, you know, whatever we claim is, is actually true. So again, you know, doing the um, hypothesis test really just comes down to a bunch of steps, right? We always want to define what test we are doing, define our null and alternate hypothesis, um, calculate the test statistic, and then it's always a good idea to kind of draw out and visualize what the um, alternate hypothesis is saying relative to this test statistic, then just calculating the p-value, and finally, the most important really is defining what the conclusion should be. So I hope this video is helpful. If you have any qu questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye.